Can you guess what this is? Well, they're Christmas trees, not really. The, every tree in here probably costs upwards into about $3,000 each. These are hybrid, farm raised, very, very exquisite, contoured trees that have been burlapped and saved through the winter cold. I have one. Take a peek in here and you can kind of see the structure of them. They're just gorgeous. They're in great shape, you see? Because through the winter, they didn't get one bit of nothing on them. You see how beautiful it is? What could I suck in the morning? <laughs> yeah, I take my walk and suck this. So we have one, two, oh, we have some, another one over here. And as you can see through the burlap, look at the tips on them. They're just absolutely gorgeous. Look at them. I mean, that's why they're covering them up because look at the tips. The tips are just, I boil these and make tea, right? But um, I have my own forest, so I go and get the tea tips because these are like farmed and expensive. Now, up in here, as you can see, they've already put up over yonder approximately 2,000 2, houses. And up here on this hill, they're going to put in another 3,000 houses. This is all farmland that the farmers just got pissed off and says, you know what? I don't want these housing developments close to me. So I, like, when a farmer wakes up in the morning, and the reason why they are on farms is because they want to get away from the traffic, the noise, they want to live off the land, they want to raise their animals in paradise. Paradise is simply this. Now these are also trees that have been tied up for the winter, pruned and kind of kept, but you know, we only have three more weekends until actual spring. But in here, there's a lot of snow still on the ground. This house does not unify with these houses here at all. Just sticks out. So I thought I'd shoot this, it's kind of cool. But all of these meadows for miles and miles around on both sides of the highway, hectares and hectares and miles and miles. The farmers just said, I do not want to wake up to one single solitary housing development for my cows, for my horses, for my chickens, for my mind, for my soul, for my body, for the spirit of Mother Earth that she's given me, how it's been passed down from generations to generations. I do not want to look at one single solitary soul coming in here with all this gas emission out of their cars and trucks, the noise, the fighting, the road rage, and everything that comes with the sewage, the garbage, everything that comes with hundreds of thousands of homes all pushed together, all selling for $1.62 million in old swampy farmland that they excavate, they fill in, and they say, oh, this is the Grand Valley of exquisite outdoor living. Come and buy this right away. Oh, it's the most beautiful place to live. Oh, all your friends will be there. All your friends from India will come and live in the same spot. All your friends from China will come and live in the same spot. All your friends from Sri Lanka will come and live in the same spot. All your friends from Korea will come live in the same spot. All your friends from, from Thailand will come and live in the same spot. But what they don't understand, and yes, Doug Ford said that Canada is the most ethnic, Toronto is the most ethnic place we have, yes. 
There's 14 billion pe uh, million people in Toronto, but there's 28,000 children who have autism, who have no way to, to, to function, to have PSWs, to pro proper health care. They have government uh, standard health care, but most of these children, some of them have Asperger's, some of them are artistic, some of them have speech impediments and disabilities and they can't walk properly. Yeah, they'll go on disability, they'll throw this in and that in. But imagine, be, we, imagine being a parent when you have two children and they're both autistic and you have no way to put them in private schools. You gotta send them to a normal public school. Imagine the bullying, the ridicule, the hardship. But they'll let in a million immigrants or three million a year off a boat that say, oh, they come from a war infested place. And there's Canadian kids that don't even have proper care with their mental illness, their physically disabilities, that they have been born with because they have not been blessed with this they have been cursed with it and the poor families that have to deal with one i know four families that have two children each and their only two children are both autistic now one's a boy one's a girl one is two boys one is two girls and doug ford says Trade with the United States, trade with the United States, trade with the United States. Okay. All of this trading with the United States is only making the United States richer because our dollar's down. But what about the Canadians? Doug Ford, you can talk because you're a billionaire, but what about the average guy? Keep on saying about the average guy, the average guy. Yeah, Rob Ford used to talk to the people in the hood. It's no problem. Well, what the hell are you doing to your money? I don't see you going to no hood and opening up anything for no, for no poor, poor Canadian children who have no dads, all single mother families. And you talk and smack because you have four girls that have a father who's a billionaire. Well, that's all well and good. Well, why don't you put a pair of hood shoes on, go in the hood, and get on that block in York Woods at Jane and Finch. All I want you to do it is just for a half an hour. Ask people if you can have some money for some poutine for lunch or perhaps a patty and a pop. And uh, that's for the rich kids in the hood. The other ones, you know what they eat? Those noodles, 10 cents a pack, the dry ones. It's a very, very sad state of affairs. Children are not getting the proper nutrition. The rich are getting richer. The poor is getting poorer. And a bunch of stupid politicians are talking a bunch of smack. And I'm pissed.